Hey everyone, this is Anirudh from Edureka. In this session, let's have a look at the top 8 deep learning frameworks which is very popular and widely used. This session is helpful for anyone who's considering to expand their knowledge about all the frameworks out there or if you're just considering to build a career in deep learning. I have categorized the eight frameworks in descending order of the rank based on various factors such as efficiency, community and how easy it is to actually get started with each of these. Without further ado, let's dive into Chainer. It is the first one in this top eight rundown and I'm sure you guys are all curious about Chainer, right? Well, Chainer is a Python based deep learning framework defined by run strategy. The first thing we look at is performance. Well, Chainer has got that sorted. It is known for its high performance capabilities in all of the domains. Well, with performance comes a slight prerequisite on how easy it is to actually get around and get the work done with the framework, right? Again, Chainer is intuitive and coding in it is really easy, guys. I would rate it about 6 on 10 at this point though. Now that you know it is intuitive, what's fancy about Chainer? Well, let me tell you, it provides really good dynamism and helps with understanding the flow of the code better. And this in turn works well because of the direct approach into good machine translation as well. Well, Chainer is widely used, but it is mainly used for speech recognition and sentiment analysis of all sorts. Okay, so now that Chainer is done, what do we have next on the list? Well, it's Microsoft's CNTK. However, it has a new name now, guys. It's called Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit. Well, that sounds fancy, right? Well, CNTK is actually fancy. As a framework, it is supported by interfaces such as command line, C++ and Python. It's said to provide really high scalability in terms of training a convolutional neural network for images, speech or any textual based data. When working on multiple machines, the scalability is definitely better than Theano or say even TensorFlow to some extent. And when it comes to usage, it has to be handwriting recognition and speech recognition mainly. This is made easy because inventing a new complex layer types in CNTK is extremely straightforward. But you might be curious at this point about how so, right? Well, users will not have to implement anything in a low level language, which is definitely worth noting. Well, now that that's done, next up we have generative adversarial networks. Well, that's a mouthful. However, not to worry guys. It's just one of the types of reinforcement learning. And now that we've established that, how does it scale? Again, on a scale of 1 to 10, it ranks at about 7 on how easy it is to actually train the models. And lastly, of course, Microsoft after 2012 has been making a lot of its technologies open source. This definitely adds to the number of contributors that are pouring in and expanding the community eventually. However, due to the lack of support on ARM architecture, the capability on mobile is fairly limited. Well, to fix this, Cafe came into the picture. Well, CAFE is another deep learning framework that is supported with interfaces like C, C++, Python, MATLAB, as well as the command line interface. Well, that's lovely. It is popularly used for vision recognition, guys. However, CAFE does not support fine granularity network layers like those found in TensorFlow or CNTK. I'm pretty sure you might be wondering why. Well, we will require a bit of low level language code, which I'm sure majority of us don't like, right? Well, again, it has to be open source. So if it's getting all the attention for its sure speed and performance, I'm sure again, you're wondering how. Well, Cafe's biggest bragging right is definitely its speed. More on this in just a second. Also, the presence of something called as the Cafe Model Zoo is really good. It is really simple, guys. It is basically a deep net repository, which is already pre-trained and it is available to use immediately. Well, now let's get back to that speed thing. Well, we all love speed, right? Cafe just ups its game here because it can process over 60 million images on a daily basis with just one single NVIDIA K40 GPU. Well, that's about 1 millisecond per image for inference and 4 milliseconds per image for learning. And with more recent libraries, it is getting still faster. Well, this is definitely amazing. So this is definitely like icing on a cake and whether it is modeling CNNs or solving image processing issues, this has to be the go-to library in my opinion. But given the architecture, the overall support and the language modeling capabilities, it lacks a little bit when compared to these other frameworks. So to fix this, what do we do? Well, let's bring in Mixnet to the picture. The beauty of Mixnet is that it provides the user the ability to code in a variety of programming languages ranging from Python, C++, R, Julia and Scala to name a few. Well, there are more actually. Well, this means that you can train your deep learning models with whichever language you're comfortable with 
and you don't have to learn anything new from scratch. Well, that's really good, right? Well, now we need to find out how Mixnet actually stands out. Well, for starters, Mixnet was specifically designed for high efficiency, high productivity and a lot of flexibility, guys. Mixnet supports long-term short-term memory, which is also called as LSTM, along with the support for both recurring neural nets and convolutional neural nets. Also, it's known for its capabilities in imaging, speech recognition, forecasting, as well as natural language processing. And lastly, Amazon employed Mixnet as its go-to reference library for majority of its deep learning requirements. Well, we're looking at a lot of interfaces like C, C++, Python, and even MATLAB. Aren't we missing something that makes our lives that much simpler, guys? Well, yes, you might have guessed it right. I'm talking about Java. We have a framework which is exactly tailor-made for this and it's deep learning for Java. Guys, the biggest highlight is that it provides parallel training through iterative reduce and microservice architecture adoption coupled with distributed CPUs and GPUs. Well, to be honest, I would be impressed by anything which involves a lot of CPUs and GPUs at the same time. Well, this framework is widely adopted as a commercial and industry-focused deep learning platform. Well, now that we have established that, what's the biggest advantage you ask? Well, for starters, you can bring together the entire Java ecosystem to execute deep learning. And what makes it even better is that it can be administered on top of Hadoop and Spark to orchestrate multiple host threads. The framework shows matchless potential for image recognition, fraud detection, text mining and paths of speech tagging and natural language processes as well, which in my opinion is definitely amazing. Well, deep learning for Java comes with a deep network support through RBM. RBM is nothing but restricted Boltzmann machine. Also DBN, DBN stands for deep belief networks. Well, it's nothing but a layered graphical model in simple terms. And also the added support for convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks and long-term short-term memory, which is also called as LSTM networks as well. Well, guys, you need to take a note that it is much more efficient in comparison to Python in multiple fields. When it comes to image recognition tasks using multiple GPUs, it is actually as fast as CAFE, which again impressed me a lot. Also, with Java as your core programming language, you should certainly opt for this deep learning framework if you're looking for a robust and effective method of deploying your neural network models to production. Well, now that we have sorted this out, we're just left with the top three frameworks for now. Well, I have saved the best for the last, so quickly let's take a look at our number three competitor, which is Keras. Well, what I really like about Keras is that for starters, it is well known for being minimalistic and you get the work done with Python. Well, Keras supports both convolutional and recurrent networks that are capable of running on top of either Theano or TensorFlow. Well, due to the fact that the TensorFlow interface is a tad bit challenging coupled with the fact that it is a low level library that can intricate for new users, well, it makes it a bit tough, right? But Keras was built to provide a simplistic interface for the purpose of quick prototyping by constructing effective neural networks that can work with TensorFlow. And there we asked the question and we answered it. Also guys, Keras is a celebrity to be honest. It had over 4,800 contributors at launch and now it has over 250,000 active developers and it is still adding. Well, with every year, there is a two times growth on the overall development of the framework. And since it's getting all this good attention, it has certainly made a really good name among the majority of the startups. Well, we have eight standout features, which I believe deserved a mention in the session. Well, you're curious, right? So let's start out. Well, definitely starting out with the focus provided on user experience, followed by the large adoption in the industry, making everyone use the framework and build a vast community overall. And of course, the support to let use of multiple backends, develop and deploy on multiple platforms is a plus. Well, what surprised me is that it has a real good community when it comes to research as well. And lastly, of course, all the concepts are really, really easy to grasp, guys. Well, guys, at this point, we have established that Keras is really good, right? But is it as good as PyTorch, which is the next framework I want you guys to check out? Well, we haven't looked at definitions for a while. So what is PyTorch? Well, PyTorch is a scientific computation package created by all the amazing people at Facebook. It is Lua powered and works with Python, which is definitely a win already. And we haven't even begun to discuss the framework. Well, guys, it's majorly used by industry giants like Facebook, obviously, Twitter and even Google to a certain extent. Well, PyTorch is giving you a really good time when it comes to using Facebook, right? You're wondering how? Well, let me tell you this. Consider that it's a weekend and you're partying with friends. You decide to click a lot of pictures and you want to put them on Facebook, right? But tagging everyone manually, I am not a fan of this and I'm sure you are not too. 
Well, remember those magical pop-ups which automatically detect faces? Well, thank PyTorch for that. However, as opposed to Torch, which is actually the predecessor of PyTorch, PyTorch runs on Python, which means that anyone with a basic understanding of Python can get started on building their own deep learning models. However, features such as automatic differentiation by the AutoGrad module and the support for dynamic computation graphs is what makes PyTorch stand out when it compares to all the other seven frameworks, to be honest. Also off late, PyTorch has seen a high level of adoption within the deep learning framework community and is considered to be quite the competitor to TensorFlow. Well, which is exactly what we are going to talk about and TensorFlow definitely grabbed the number one spot in this rundown of the framework. Well, TensorFlow is the brainchild of all the amazing people at Google. The most well-known use case of TensorFlow has definitely got to be Google Translate, right? It is coupled with the capabilities of natural language processing, text classification, speech recognition, image recognition, forecasting and tagging. Well, wow, the list goes on and on for sure. Well, it is arguably one of the best frameworks right now, which is why it has been adopted by several giants at scale such as Airbus, Twitter, IBM and mainly others due to the highly flexible system architecture. Also guys, TensorFlow is available on both desktop and mobile and also supports languages such as Python, C++ and R to create deep learning models along with the wrapper libraries. Well, now we know why TensorFlow is really good, right? Well, it comes with two tools which are widely used. Well, starting out with TensorBoard, it is used for effective data visualization of network modeling and performance. And secondly, TensorFlow Serving for rapid deployment of new algorithms or experiments while retaining the same server architecture and the APIs. Well, if you happen to be taking your first steps when it comes to deep learning, it is sort of a no-brainer that you should opt for TensorFlow given that it is Python based, it is supported by Google and it comes loaded with documentations and walkthroughs to guide you. Well, that being said, let me wind up the session by asking you this. Which deep learning framework from this list would best suit your requirements? Well, the answer to that is dependent on you and definitely lies on a number of factors. However, if you're just looking to get started, then a Python based deep learning framework like TensorFlow or Chainer, as I previously mentioned, should be your choice. But if you happen to be seasoned, you need to consider speed, resource requirement and usage along with the coherence of the trained model before picking out the best deep learning framework there is. Well guys, we all love deep learning and this is one amazing community to be a part of. Well, that is it for this small session guys. I hope you took away some real good points from here and that this helped you kickstart your learning. We do have in-depth tutorials on the channel for you to learn about TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras and more. So make sure to check that out. So thank you guys. You know what to do. If you have any queries, head down to the comment section below and leave a comment. Let's discuss more on this there. And also make sure to subscribe to our channel for more information on the latest technologies and the courses offered. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!